Good day and God bless. Welcome to our time of devotion and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for grace, for mercies, for, for peace beyond our understanding. For Lord, even though we are surrounded by turmoil and struggles and issues and things we're just trying to get through today, Lord, there are things you have set aside. You've been a buckler and a shield. You are our sure defender from times of trouble beyond our comprehension and beyond our ability to cope with. Lord, even when we face our time of troubles, you don't leave us there alone, but you grant us a, a peaceful surrounding. You grant us help all around us. You grant us friendships. You grant us love. So Lord, we ask your help and the wisdom to embrace it the inspiration of your spirit to see it, especially as we turn to your word, especially, Lord, as in turning to your word together, we become your church. We become more and more your people, heirs of your kingdom, rightly listening to your will, that your will will be done in us as we seek to be a sign of that grace and peace you mean for each one of us and all of us together each and every day. Lord, let this day be a day of blessings, and let us be a part of one another's blessings. All this in Christ we pray. Amen. Turning to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4 at verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What are you thinking? Are you sure that's what you're thinking? And if you are unsure of what your thoughts mean, what your ideas are, what the purpose of all of this is, how have you looked for wisdom and guidance? When we consider what life is about and what we're doing in life, what, what our choices should be, we have the gifts of reason of understanding. And we even have the opportunities to turn to the reason and understanding and guidance of one another. There's a big business in the world today for self-help books, of self-discovery and self-realization books. And too often these texts and the advice of the world and the popular psychology is to seek for a oneness of, of yourself, to simply define yourself by a certain thing and have that be your defining quality, what sets you apart from the rest. But what God's word invites us to consider is that you're not just one thing. That all those things that you are, those different parts of life that you fulfill, all of them together in harmony in dialogue are meant to be the whole you that you don't have to be one thing over another or one thing one moment and something else the next but at times to be a parent and other times to be a child we all have these aspects of who we are we are all somebody's child we all have our employments in the world. We all have our callings and abilities and, and gifts and hobbies, duties and responsibilities. And none of these are an exclusion of one another. God's word helps us to distinguish and see those differences in us, those, those distinctions in us, but doesn't call us to be broken apart and into small pieces. Instead, in what could divide us, to recognize what could break us apart, to see how God holds us together. That it is so sharp to point out the variety of who we are, that God's word doesn't divide us. It calls us to wholeness, to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart that binds us, God's love that brings us together and who we are as individuals, but also as who we are as families, as, as communities, as churches. 
For God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even, dividing asunder the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. Not that we'll be broken apart, but in seeing the distinction of who we are, we will rejoice in how God holds us together. God bless and keep you. Amen.